Welcome to Hawkridge's 3D Experience Platform Explained series. In this first episode, we will be looking at the integration of SOLIDWORKS to the platform. We start with the role of a product manager who is tasked with resolving issues reported on one of his products. After logging into the platform, the product manager can view his corporate and personal dashboards. Any user on the platform can easily create a dashboard. The dashboards are made up of widgets that can be dragged and dropped on the page. The 3D Experience platform provides social collaboration through communities. Members of the communities can post questions, ideas, perform surveys, write posts, and interact around ideas and concepts in an unstructured manner, which generally fosters innovation. The built-in ideation functionality is specifically powerful and enables people to innovate on ideas and vote them up or down. Ideas that reach the end of the ideation funnel can become product requirements. Collaborating around unstructured data fosters greater innovation since all stakeholders, whether internal or external, are involved in the process. Here the product manager has created a dashboard tab with his to-do items. These items could be collaborative tasks that he is either managing or assigning to other users, issues that he is responsible for managing or change action chain orders and change requests that he might be involved in. Clicking on one of the issues takes us to the issue summary power view. Here we see all the issues that have been registered against this product. Clicking on a category in the chart will filter the list by that classification for instance, here we see the list filtered by urgent priority. Coming back to the unfilter list, let's dig into one of the issues that the product manager is responsible for. Here we see the details of the issue. We can see that the issue is reported against a specific product. Clicking the product link will take us to the detailed bill of materials that the issue is reported against. Reporting an issue against other data is totally optional, but does provide full traceability. An issue can also be resolved by some action, in this case, a change action that involved the, ref the reference product. Additional documentation can be added to the issue at any stage during its active life cycle. This provides an accurate audit trail of how a specific problem was solved and why. The product manager now wishes to load a previous design review session that addressed how to solve the issue. Using the standard search, he can easily find the product that he is responsible for. Dragging and dropping the product straight into the design review widget couldn't be easier. Throughout the platform, we will see the same behavior of search, drag, and drop. Now the product is loaded in session, he can find available design review sessions that have been saved. Design Review allows the users to create slides with various markups, cross-sections, and views. There is no limit to how many slides can be created for a design review session. Adding dimensions and markups is very easy. As we can see here, we can snap the markup to any point, line, or circle center. The visual attributes of the markup can be defined by the user. The slide is updated and saved for future reference. In this case, the product manager is tasked with assigning work to a designer. To facilitate this, he is going to create a new ad hoc collaborative task. The collaborative task is, is a quick way to assign work to one or multiple users. Filling in the fields couldn't be easier. Define the delivery date, how long you expect the task to take, and assign users. Optionally, you can select to add deliverables and reference documentation to the task. Using the search, our product manager can quickly find the product and drag and drop it to the task as an attachment or deliverable. As we see here, additional related information can be added to the task. They're providing all the information in one place so that the person assigned to execute the task will not have to search for related data. Finally, the product manager provides a detailed description of the change that is required. The task is saved and the assignees notified. The designer has been assigned the task. He receives a notification in his email. From the email, he can click on a link and go directly to the task on the platform. As we see here, the designer sees the task as it was defined by the product manager. However, the chances are that as a designer, he spends most of his time working in SOLIDWORKS. With the SOLIDWORKS 3D Experience Collaborative Services, 
the platform is available to the designer from within the SOLIDWORKS interface. Here he has the same view on the tasks as we saw on the platform. From within the SOLIDWORKS interface, he can review his tasks, understand what is required, and assign them to the in-work state through simple drag and drop. The attached assembly can be opened in SOLIDWORKS directly from the task. Any required data is downloaded and opened at the same time. As we see here, the assembly is opened in SOLIDWORKS. The current state of the, uh, state of the assembly is displayed. There are multiple lifecycle states and revisions in this assembly. Clicking on one of the part nodes will cross-highlight with the graphics and the feature tree on the left side. It is therefore easy to find the parts that require change. We can see here that the parts are currently in a release state. If the designer wishes to change them, he must first create a new revision of the part. Using the lifecycle toolbar, he can quickly generate a new revision of the part. While this defines a new revision, it is it has not yet been loaded into the session. To do this, the designer can switch between multiple available versions of the part within the SOLIDWORKS session. Now we can see that we have a part that is revision B.1 and in the in-work state, meaning that it can be revised. Any other parts that have a new available version are denoted with the plus sign as we can see here. Now all the required parts have new revisions are in the in-work state. Before we can make changes to the parts, though, we must reserve them. This prevents other users who might be working on this assembly from making changes to the same parts. Now, our designer can make the required changes. As we can see here, Opening the part also displays its state on the platform within the SOLIDWORKS interface. As soon as changes are made to the part, the platform information is updated. As we see here, the save icon is displayed on the part node in the 3D experience tree. This indicates that updates are pending. The changes are quickly saved and the designer updates the assembly. All part changes are successfully saved to the platform and the designer can unreserve the parts. If he is authorized to do so, the designer may change the lifecycle state of the parts directly from this interface, thereby say changing an in-work state to frozen or released. Once all the parts have been unreserved and the assembly is in the correct state, it can now be saved back to the platform since the assembly has changed, it must also be saved. The save interface provides the designer with an overview of everything that has changed and what will be updated to the platform. All part and state information is displayed here. In this case, he selects to create a new version of the assembly directly from the save dialog. Only the data that has changed is uploaded to the platform. As we can see here, once saved, the new version of the assembly is displayed in the tree. Having successfully completed the task, the designer can now switch back to his collaborative tasks, find the task he was working on, and change its state to complete it. Any other stakeholders who are tracking the status of the project will be able to see that the changes have been made and the task completed. The designer, having completed this task, can now move on to his next task in the list. The platform is updated without the designer ever having to open a web browser or leave his SOLIDWORKS environment. Now that the designer has completed his work, let's take a look at how the product engineer might use the data generated to review the changes to the product. As we saw before, Standard Google-like searching enables us to quickly find and filter for the correct data. Using drag and drop, she loads the product into the Product Structure Explorer. These two widgets interact with each other, providing a structure view on the left and a graphical view on the right. 
In a later episode of this series, we will cover these widgets in greater detail. The 6W tags is a powerful and very quick way to filter and highlight data based upon any attribute. Here we can see that the product engineer can quickly graph and highlight the model by lifecycle state. Corresponding color coding is provided on the model as well as in the hierarchical structure as we can see here. The maturity state as well as a flag denoting whether this latest version is displayed. Clicking on the pie chart segments quickly filters the model and shows, in, the, in this case, only the release parts associated with the model. Clearing filters is once again done through the 6W tags. As we see here, it is clear that at least one additional version of the model is available. The product engineer wishes to review the various available revisions. This can be done directly from the Product Structure Explorer. Here we can see that two versions of the product are available. The system provides multiple different views of that data. The Explore tab shows us the link between the versions and the action that was taken to create the new version. There are many actions that can be performed directly from this interface. We will take a look at the Relational Explorer. The Relational Explorer shows us the links between the assembly, drawings, configurations, and parts, as well as any reference documentation that might have been associated with the assembly and its parts. The children of the assembly are shown on the right panel. To view the links between the assembly and its children, you need only drag and drop the part into the Relational Explorer, as we can see here. The link is immediately displayed. Let's look for a sub-assembly and understand how that might look. Dragging the sub-assembly into the Relational Explorer shows its links to the parent assembly as well as its children. From here, we can open the children of this assembly and see their links as well. The Relational Explorer shows us much more than hierarchical and logical links between data. It also can show us where used and links to projects and task deliverables, as well as many other types of links to downstream data. As we have seen before across the platform, this is a very consistent and streamlined user experience. Returning to the product structure editor, the product engineer wishes to update the assembly with different versions of the parts. Based upon the lifecycle state of the part, different options are provided as we can see here. The product manager selects which revisions to incorporate into the assembly. Once she clicks OK, the assembly is immediately updated with the latest revisions of the part she selected. In this manner, she can perform digital mock-up and experiments on the assembly. Later in this series of webinars, we will go into great depth around the role of the product engineer and how the use of the Power BI tools can assist her in her job. Finally, the product engineer wishes to review what has changed. Using the compare option from the toolbar, she can quickly load the compare interface. The current version is already selected in this interface, and she drags and drops one of the available revisions into the compare window. On the left, we see the hierarchical differences of both versions, while on the right, we see the 3D model color-coded based upon the various categories of change. The key at the top shows us the colors used to denote the various types of change in the model. Using the available toolbar, she can stop, step through the different changes, reviewing both versions side by side. This is a very easy way to identify what has changed from one version to another. Another comparison available is attribute changes. This is changes to metadata associated with the various models. As we can see here, changes are highlighted in red. As we have seen, the graphical interfaces used on the platform are very consistent, easy to learn. Finally, the product engineer can review the status of her tasks as well as the tasks that she is the owner of or involved in. Here, once again, we've seen the same task assigned to the designer. As expected, it is in the completed state. This demonstrates that data on the platform is a single source, consistent, and can be reused for multiple purposes in multiple use cases. This ends our first episode of Hawk Ridge's 3D Experience Platform Explained series. Be sure to catch our next episode, which will address document management on the 3D Experience Platform. Thank you.